rolling. Oh my god. Assalamu alaikum, guys. So I'm Aisha. And I'm Amina. Podcast created for sisters with sisters in mind. Some people don't even know what it is that they're feeling in the first place or what that, yeah. you know, that mood that they're carrying even is. Some people don't even recognise anxiety mm -hmm. as anxiety. You have no idea what's going on in a person's head. Why? Because you're not talking. Yeah. And I think that if we don't deal with the root of this cause right now, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another episode of Sister to Sister. Today we're going to be talking about the stigma of mental health. Mm. Mental health is such a broad subject. There's so many different types of mental health. I'm a qualified counsellor and I work with lots of different people, with lots of different mental health uh, problems. And sometimes, and what we're going to be talking about today, people just have general low mood and anxiety, which mm. is caused by a number of different reasons. The problem is, in the Muslim community, we often find that it's not believed or it's assumed that the person is not practicing properly or is low in Iman, in faith. But actually, it's, it's quite, it's a lot more complex than that. When I think about like the misunderstanding and this whole stigma of how people view mm. mental health, it's very, it's very much how people are viewing that individual, to be honest. They're kind of just ignoring mm. them. Yeah. They're really ignoring a lot of what is really the behaviours that, that are really them reaching out for mm. help. Because um, I think a lot of the time when people are doing things, like, for example, yeah, we see a lot of, on social media, people, you know, utilising their platform or their page or whatever to kind of, as a kind of like an outlet. Mm, yeah. And the response to whatever they may be doing or saying is sometimes one where people are judgmental and people just have a lot to say on social media in general anyway, yeah. right? And, and people will... Is observe these behaviors and what they're saying and be like mm. oh why are they acting like that oh here they go again like mm. oh ugh, attention seeking or or sometimes just not even paying real attention to the sign that actually this is an outlet and it's actually a, a cry for help mm -hmm. in a lot of ways yeah you know they miss the mark in that sense and i think this is where you know that 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 lack of empathy in society is kind of very much apparent right now in yeah, the times that yeah, we're living in. Yeah. You know, people are dis desensitized in so on so many levels. Mm -hmm. We see so much on social media where it's like somebody getting licked down by something or somebody in a fight and it's entertainment mm -hmm. and people are egging it on and people are there's no like concern. There's no, you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no real concern for the person. The majority, and I'm not saying nobody, yeah. I'm saying the majority will be in the comments saying things that lack empathy, basically. Mm. Empathy is one of the core conditions of counselling. Mm. So, like you mentioned the judgment side, mm. the core conditions um, in, in the humanistic counselling, which is like centering into the person and, and just giving the person that space is empathy being not being judgmental and being congruent which is mm. you know being very authentic in that space yeah and reflecting on what you're seeing but at the same time giving the person the space and the empathy to explore themselves and who they really are yeah. and i think like you said it is a day and a time where we don't want to know. We don't. We don't want to listen to it. Mm. And in the Muslim community, especially, we're finding that nowadays there are a few more charities and organisations that are, are are popping forward to offer this support. But when we look at the kind of family homes, it's still very much stigmatised mm. because people don't want to face their own issues mm. and they definitely don't want to face somebody else's yeah, issues that's it um 
there's a lot of anxiety, especially in the younger generation, but it also plays out in the older generation as well. Mm. But people have had it for many, many years and mm. have kind of learned to deal with it. So that kind of fear of the unknown and not really being in the present, but, but very much being inside their head. Mm. And this is, this is what anxiety is. It's a kind of a fear. Mm. you know something bad's going to happen or fear of you know thinking about children or and it and it becomes anxiety mm. when it starts to impact the daily living when it stops people from going to certain events or mm. leaving the house or doing things that they kind of would normally want to do but then they kind of oh, yeah. you know it stops yeah. them from it you're so much in your head that you become you know socially you push yourself away. It can be quite damaging over a, a prolonged period of time. Yes. And that's just that's just one of the main ones. The severe mental health, you know, people are, a lot of people now are recognising if somebody mm-hmm. has, you know, a severer form of mental health. And I think that that is, you know, a lot of the time medication is used and longer term therapy. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about the general mental health that is, you know, low mood, depression symptoms yeah, anxiety, anxiety mm-hmm. or just you know identity problems and problems where you don't as you said have an outlet and so your outlet is to lash out to become angry to go on social media to act out in some mm. in, in in a negative way because you're not processing your emotions that are you know going through your body at that time mm. it just becomes like zero to 100 and here the person is and then you know when you when you are shutting that person down they're just going to suppress it for a period of time Mm. and again it will burst back up again when we see things like road rage you know disagreements between people families not speaking to one another because you know not processing emotions in a quick way And, and this is all part of mental health it doesn't have to be as severe as anxiety or depression Mm. it can just be are you dealing with your emotions? Yeah. So much of what you said, you know, in regards to the, the the judgment, the fear, you know, it points back to, alongside the stigma, there's an attitude that comes from, you know, mm. re- several different cultures of put up and shut up mm. yeah. and don't complain mm-hmm. and be strong. And this whole idea of being strong is... You don't show the emotion again. Yeah, yeah. You don't let you don't talk too much about what's going on and complain too much. You just get on get with on it. it. Yeah. And that has its, you know, has two effects. It's that continuation through the generations. And then people, when they are going through this, they don't know who to go to. Mm. They fear the rejection. Yeah, they fear yeah. the judgment. So there's still a gap. There's still a gap between yeah. you know mental health and Muslims. Mm. Muslims are not accepting mental health in the community as much. Yes, the conversations are starting to happen, and yes, there is some acknowledgement. And yes, you know sometimes you hear people saying, "Oh, everything's mental health, and everything's this, yeah. and everything's you know everything's trauma, everything's trauma." And actually, a lot of things are trauma. Yeah, and not everybody is going to acknowledge that not everybody is going to be in a position Mm. to seek out therapy or even just general self-help and understanding of yourself and you know some of your behavior Mm. and this is why when we spoke the other day about breakdown of marriages breakdown in personal relationships breakdown in families this is so common nowadays every single person pretty much that i've spoken to is in some form of conflict with another person. Yeah, yeah. And subhanAllah, we know that, you know, it's a major sin to be, especially when it comes to kinship, when it comes to even your, you know, your your brother or your sister in Islam, but rather than it being that you're acting from a point of Quran and Sunnah, mm. right? And doing something for the sake of Allah, you're acting from a point of your own issues Hmm. and this is why we need to have these conversations one of the things that people will say and reach for straight away is Hmm. oh knowing man oh you need to connect back to Allah you need to and of course yes these things are not they they're not irrelevant they're Hmm. fully relevant right but you can't step you can't brush aside that when somebody 
feels alone, mm. you can't, you cannot understand what that person is feeling and how they are supposed to just rid themselves of this feeling. Mm. Especially if they've been doing it over and over again for yeah, years. Yeah. Because the loneliness that they're feeling is a result of other things. It's a result of not feeling like anybody understands you at all. And if anybody is listening right now and can resonate with that in on some level, mm. because I'm sure we've all been through moments in our life where you feel like no one understands what I'm saying. Yeah. No one under understands me. Now, if you magnify that and look at that every hour of every day, yeah. and that person is trying, they're still trying, they're still trying, mm -hmm. they're still trying, they're still striving, you know? Yeah. They're still putting themselves through their daily tasks. They're still doing whatever it is that it takes for them to get out of the bed yeah. and continue with somewhat of a routine. That, for them, is an effort, a huge effort. Yeah. But most of us... We undermine that because, oh, you're, you're not, you're a man's low. Oh, you're not, mm -hmm. you know, doing what you're supposed to do. D there's certain things that you will never understand if you haven't been through it. Yeah, and that's, and the that's where the empathy is. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you will not have been through it. Mm -hmm. You will not have been through it. But being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and say, oh, subhanAllah, you know what? I don't know what it's like to be you. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine it. There's a difference between, you know what, I, ca I can't understand what it is to be you, mm -hmm. but I can only imagine and I'm here to support you. We all go through and process things differently. Losing a parent, seven siblings could feel that in seven different ways. Mm. But if three of the siblings are absolutely fine getting on with it, they don't have a right to say to the other four who are not dealing with it so well, oh, what's wrong with you? Why are you? Why haven't you gotten over this yet? Mm. You, you just don't. Yeah, yeah. And obviously when it comes to death, it is processed very differently and it isn't, you know, there's there's uh, some models that show that you go through, you know, the kind of denial stage and you jump onto the kind of, you know, angry mm. or resentful and then you go on to kind of sadness and then acceptance. But actually what you find in most cases is it you just go through the different emotions at different times. Yeah. So you imagine, you know, a, a whole family, you know, suffering the loss of one person that was close to them. They're all going to be going through that at that, different those stages times. At, at different times. Mm -hmm. So you might find one is, you know, lashing out or the other's very sad. The other one's still kind of carrying on with general everyday life because in their mind, they're still in that denial bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, they still haven't really accepted you know what's happening and so they haven't been able to you know process any of those emotions but what i what i really concerns me is the youth mm. because the the impact of social media mm -hmm. and the impact of the social family system mm. that i grew up in and you grew up in is slowly slowly declining you see a family in a room together and every single person is on their phone. Mm -hmm. Communication, interaction is getting lower and lower. People are not talking to each other <coughs> to even start the understanding, mm. you know? And I came across something really sad yesterday. I think you posted it. Mm. And, um, you know, a young boy uh, had gone onto the internet, he was 15 years old, mm. and people were telling him to kill himself. Mm -hmm. They were telling him to harm himself. He'd obviously become part of some groups because he was struggling with his mental health, I'm assuming. Um, and, you know, this is where they turn to. They turn to often either, you know, the kind of uh, escapism of just scrolling through, yeah. or they turn to friends or bad company in this mm, case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mother said that there was a, a person on there saying, are you dead yet? So he had been groomed and coached into actually taking his own life. But this isn't an isolated incident. This is what I'm saying. This is, you know, where 
things are heading. Exactly. Social media, it means that you can have a number of different people inside your home. And if mother and father are sitting here, children are, you know, sitting there, everybody's on their phone. Mm. You have no idea what's going on in a person's head. Why? Because you're not talking. Yeah. And I think that if we don't deal with the root of this cause right now, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Mm. And that's obviously not the only reason, you know, we've spoken about unresolved issues, you know, parenting, development. Yeah. These things, you know, as a parent, it can offer, and I'm not a parent, but as a parent, it can be quite difficult to accept responsibility of things yeah, that you, you know, 100%. parents make mistakes, don't mm -hmm. they? But if you, you know, if you're accepting responsibility that, that things happened in your child's upbringing, that, you know, now they're impacted in a certain way. It's very, it's not easy, but it, it's a journey. But it, you can you can make the steps to change what's happened. You can make the step to rectify, you know, the relationship. You know, the, the person can get help. They can just have a bit more self-awareness or understanding or therapy. You know, we have to emphasize, you know, that practicing Islam Praying your salah, turning back to Allah, making du'a mm. are the first things first, right? As a Muslim, everything else is secondary. Everything else is underneath that. But I'll be honest, I've had a lot of therapy myself, and having therapy has allowed me to, it's to taken away certain things and allowed me to acknowledge certain things in my character, which yes. then in turn can make me a better Muslim. Not a perfect Muslim, but it can make me a better Muslim. It's because... almost like the therapy complements your Islam. Of course, yeah. It complements your Islam because yeah. it allows you to to actually adopt the characteristics that yeah. you're supposed to have as a Muslim. As a Muslim yeah. Because it opens up the window of self-awareness awareness. and it makes you home in on yourself. Yeah. A lot of the time in you know in, in situations we're pointing looking to point the finger yeah. and we're looking to blame someone else. Like yeah. you said just now as a parent, one of the hardest things to do is acknowledge where you may have gone wrong mm. or where you could have done something different or said something different. One of the hardest things to do is to allow your ego to take a back seat mm -hmm. in a situation and choose a different response. It's hard yeah. because above everything, you, you want to exert your authority yeah. you want to exert your authority over this person this child that you know you carried into the world mm. remembering that they do not belong to you yeah. above everything in that situation in that moment is key yeah because they belong to allah mm. every one of us only belongs to allah yeah. no one does it belong to no one so when you come at it with that mindset and you look at this person, you know, this teenager who's given that attitude, who's saying what they're saying, and you walk away from the situation and choose to respond with 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 that rather than, you know, all of the authoritative yeah. position of parenting that you want to come with. And trust me, I know. But that can happen within a in a marital setting. Of as course. Well. Exactly. <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's one of the hardest things to have that sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Because that's yeah. what that is essentially is sabbath. Because you have to leave room <laughs> for the person to grow, and being do 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 doesn't give any yeah. room. People don't want to hear moaning, complaining. Mm. You know what they you know the the things that they're not doing right. They don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, a child doesn't want to hear that. Your spouse doesn't want to hear that. My mum doesn't want to hear that because <laughs> I've fallen into that even my mum you need to you know people don't want to be told what to do it's all about giving yeah. them the space and that's what therapy is yeah why some people do benefit a lot from working it out themselves yeah um I can only imagine how difficult it is like as a parent I think that's just not that's the, fin the definitive part though, isn't it? Like some of us will look at support as, oh, I need to tell you what to, to do. do. I need to, this is what, yeah. this is how you do it. This is what you should be doing. That's not support. Yeah. Support is, you know, advice. Support is letting the person make the mistakes and being there for them mm -hmm. when they've made the mistake mm -hmm. without saying, I told you, <laughs> but was, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, this is what's happened. Here's a solution. Yeah. Would you like to try this now? You know, sometimes we just have to go through the motions with people for our own sake, our own mental health. Yeah. You have to, to be yeah. careful mm. who you give, who, whose energy you allow around you, who you allow to take up your time. Fine. You know, yeah. there has to be boundaries. But again, part of it's, it's a huge part of it. It's a huge part of, you know, de your developmental stages yeah. is setting boundaries. Yeah. I don't know who it was that said this, but somebody said, you know, therapy is in the Quran and Sunnah. And when you look at the Quran and Sunnah, all of these things are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet ﷺ have mentioned various different things that we can take from that and understand to mm. be this is what therapy is. So the mm. first one is you know, Allah will not change the condition of a person yeah. until you change what's inside of mm. yourself. And mm. I love that mm. because until you take personal responsibility and accountability, there's no way that you can make start to make changes. 100%. There's no way that you can step towards being 100%. a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So we already know this within the Quran and Sunnah. How we choose to do that is up to the individual. Yes. And also when you were talking about setting the boundaries and making sure that the people around you are benefiting you. Mm. We know from our deans, Panallah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are upon the religion of your friend. Mm. And, you know, the likeness of the good companion is that of a mm. must yes. When you leave that, um, the gathering or you meet up with your friends, you come away, you're yeah. feeling refreshed, you're feeling your Iman boosted. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, the comparison of smelling like musk, you know, you're beautified in yeah. your, in your, in, in the way that you feel. And then the, the opposite, it's like the blacksmith, you know, when you go into a blacksmith and your clothes become dirty, mm. it's like that bad companionship, you know, you walk away from them and you just don't feel boosted. You feel a bit agitated. Maybe some of the language, you know, that you're using mm. changes mm -hmm. and you kind of you feel like oh, that was a wasted bit of time so we know you know from quran and sunnah these things are set to protect us to protect our mental yeah. health yeah 100 for myself my the beginning of my i suppose healing journey that ayah that you mentioned mm. surah al arad um ayah number 11 i think it is mm. it came it kept on coming up for me yeah yeah, yeah. it kept on coming up for me in the beginning of my journey and it was like Allah kept showing me mm. you have to start doing this mm -hmm. you have to start doing this one thing that I think I have really come to acknowledge is you have to allow yourself to feel the negative emotions mm -hmm. yeah. we don't allow ourselves to feel pain which is where a lot of the whole you know the thing with anxiety stress because yeah. we don't know how to process it yeah so many of us again have not been taught how to process emotions mm -hmm. so many of us have not been taught how to even talk about emotions mm -hmm. because it's in our it's embedded in our cultures that we don't talk about these things we be strong yeah. you keep it moving you don't say nothing you just hold the trophy and keep it moving mm -hmm. and through that, it means that we don't process those negative emotions. We don't even allow the uh, negative, the negative emotion to 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 take hold of us. If you're layering it with more negativity, yeah. rather than just allowing it to be and asking yourself, where is it coming from? What is it? Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Why am I feeling frustrated right now? Why am I feeling anxiety? Why am I feeling like this? You start to really process what is going on in your head mm. what is it that you saw or yeah. heard but I think, or felt that yeah. when it comes to processing the negative emotions mm -hmm. you know like you've mentioned before some people don't even know what it is that they're feeling in the first place or what that yeah. you know that mood that they're carrying even is some people don't even recognize anxiety mm -hmm. as anxiety because it shows up in so many different ways yeah 
Yeah. Some people don't recognize depression as being depression because they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. They're just sitting in it. It's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal that they struggle to get out of the bed every morning, that they spend an hour scrolling on their phone yeah. to numb whatever it is that they're feeling, thinking and yeah. feeling about. It's normal that mm -hmm. they, <clears throat> you know, when they get in the car, if somebody's not driving quick enough, they're going to start shouting and screaming. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. And it's a journey that a lot of people are not on. Mm. And so when you speak about it, it's really interesting that you've processed and you've understood and you've become more aware, self-aware mm. of all of the different feelings. And it's almost like slowing down. Yes. And, oh. What's that feeling? What's that feeling? Yeah. Or why yeah. did I react like that? But the first step, again, is finding out that there's something that doesn't feel right, that there's something that you want to look at. Mm. So, for example, when I have clients come into therapy, it's usually because they've got to a certain point in their life where they're just not happy, mm. you know, and they don't feel that they're dealing with some of their problems that are arising mm. in the best way. Mm. So they get to a point and it's usually a point where, you know, something bad has happened, mm. but we can all, you know, take charge of our, of our general mental health. And it hasn't always got to be extreme, but there are, you know, general things that we can do to make sure we are in a space of good mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're starting to feel negative emotions and it's starting to impact on your daily life, that's when you may need to have a look at what's going on. Mm. I think, and you know, we all have um, good days and bad days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in the Quran. Yeah, of course. The believer has good days and bad days in turn. We're not really talking about that. We're talking about it's starting to become a daily issue that's affecting your life. It might yeah. be you're not working, you're feeling, you know, on edge, mm. which is, you know, a form of anxiety. You're, you know, struggling to get out of bed, not getting out of bed, um, you know, getting into arguments with people on a continual basis, displaying negative emotions like anger, frustration, mm. um, you mm. know, withdrawing from people, um, not, uh, you know, having, you know, lots of conflict in an unhealthy way, mm. then it might be a point to kind of look at what's going on. And from a self-awareness perspective, you have to spend some time alone. Mm. You know, the Prophet ﷺ often went and spent time alone. And I think that we are constantly, like, in the presence of other people, our families, we're always doing something, we're always doing you know, constantly, and it takes away from the here and now, the feelings that are going on in the body. Because like you said, with escapism and numbing, if you're constantly on social media, you're constantly, you know, doing the school run, going to work, coming back, you know, cooking dinner, doing this, doing that, you're not going to have that time and that space to step back and look at if there is a problem going on. One thing I always ask my clients is, Whatever the negative emotion is, where do you feel that in your body? There is um, a difference between people literally isolating themselves, right? Oh, yeah. And what you're saying, yeah, yeah. which is giving yourself time. Yeah. And it kind of leads into that element of self-care, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's time to process. It's time to yeah. actually think. But that is for those who are ready to take that journey there is a huge difference between you isolating yourself from the world mm. and sitting in your negative thoughts than spending time alone and processing what you're going through and where it's coming from mm. because you have to be able to also reach out for to help from the right people like you mentioned with the you know being around people who will help you support you yeah will push you in the right direction you know, those who smell but, like the musk smell. Yeah. Up. But it, it, well, the reason why I, I say that is because most, a lot of people are very much alone and don't have that support. Yeah. And it's quite difficult yeah. to, um, isolation is very different to spending time alone. Isolation mm. is usually has like a negative connotation of, 
you are cutting off yes. from everyone else mm. and for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. Whereas spending time alone is like quite often quite therapeutic, mm -hmm. especially if you're on the go with children, with family, with work. It's a necessary part to spend time alone. So in this context, we're talking about to understand the negative emotion in the body. Mm. And the reason why I say this is because not everyone can afford counselling. Yeah. And I work with the NHS referrals. Mm. It could be three to six months before mm -hmm. you get that counselling. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a little bit of self-work yeah. to get ourselves prepared and to look after ourselves in the interim. Mm. So as I said, like that spending time alone doesn't need to be prolonged periods of time. It could just be like, you know, just taking a moment, going for a walk in the park. Now, not only is this good to process that emotion, but it's also recommended yes. to go outside and, you know, spend 20 minutes. And I love doing that. Mm. I, I, I find that if I'm feeling a bit, a bit uh, grey, my mind feels a bit grey and I feel a bit agitated or frustrate, frustrated for one reason or another, I sometimes take myself into nature and just go and have a walk around just you know do some deep breathing exercises which again are really good for regulating the emotions mm. so that deep belly breathing breathing out if you if you do it properly and you really breathe from inside the stomach mm. you just feel like your whole body relax mm. it really is regulating so these are just little things that an individual can do to kind of start to look at what's wrong and this is for the people that are ready like you said mm. and i think leading on from that you know as a community we need to be kind we mm. need to be as you you've said in previous points compassionate and compassionate and merciful mm. because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us you know you we want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy mm -hmm. we have to be merciful this is the time where people are struggling yeah. with their mental health mm. as i said it's very difficult to go into you know all of the different types of mental health in this conversation yeah, yeah. but struggling like i said on a prolonged uh basis in in different ways like you said not showering not having any any real zeal for life you know being feeling strong emotions that stop you from you know interacting with other people, mm. feeling very angry, agitated, frustrated, mm -hmm. you know, feeling, you know, uh, on edge all of the time, you know, feeling very sad, isolating. There's lots of different symptoms, if you yeah. like, yeah. to look out for if you are a person that is, you know, looking and seeing. And I didn't know these things a few years ago. You know, a few years ago, I wasn't aware of these things before I did my counselling training um, because you just look at my dad was schizophrenic, right? My dad had paranoid schizophrenia. So mental health to me was, mm. you know, severe mental health episodes, you know, big reactions, different, you know, voices uh, seeing things. So I feel, I feel like we sometimes term and deem a problem with mental health as big you know the big mental health stuff but actually you know suicidal ideation which is people that are feeling quite you know ready to take their own life yeah. is, is on the up mm. it is on the up especially in men and you know a lot of my clients you know probably 70 to 80 percent of the clients that i've had in the last three years have had some suicidal ideation mm. um there's been a few Muslim, they're not all Muslim clients, but there has been a few Muslims. There's been Muslims that's contacted both of us. So I think we should stop pushing the issue under the, the carpet and stop pretending like it doesn't affect us because it, it does. Coming back to the point where you said about people are struggling with their mental health, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that one of the signs of the last day will be when it is, you know, holding on to your religion will be like mm -hmm. holding on to hot coals. And the two are seemingly hand in hand mm -hmm. those who are struggling mentally yeah. and emotionally yeah, yeah, yeah. struggle to hold on to their deen mm. and as a muslim community we need to recognize that yeah. so that we can be able to support people in you know better ways those of us who are making that journey who are 
leaning into the discomfort and who are learning about ourselves. Mm. We need to pass on what we're learning to those who are closest to us, yeah. our family members, because that's where it starts. Each one of us are shepherd yeah, to our sheep. So we have to start to pass that on to our family members, our children, yeah. our siblings, even our parents, if we can. Yeah. You know, it's that's difficult. But however we can, and even if we can't share that knowledge and get you know, get them to take it up, then we have to support them yeah. in as best ways that we can. Mm, and it reminded me of the verse in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, save yourself first and then your families. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not, you know, a scholar, but when I hear that verse, there's so many ways to look at it. But saving yourself can mean getting the help that you need in order to, you know, have a good quality of life for yourself yes. and for your family. Mm. And of course, you know, like we're, we're talking about supporting your family members, supporting those close to you. How can you do that unless... You rectify certain things with inside your health, inside 100%. yourself. Yeah, that was a good conversation. Yes. So we do hope that you benefited from that and take away, you know, whatever you whatever you need to take from it. But just take it and use it in the community, inshallah. And let's just work together to help each other get better. Yes, indeed. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you here next time on Sister to Sister. We appreciate all of the love and all of the feedback here on Sister to Sister. So until next time, be kind as you never know what battle someone is facing.